Good afternoon. Welcome to the Oklahoma City Board of Adjustment for uh, May the 16th. And I'm going to call the meeting to order. And the, the first item on the agenda is to turn off your electronic devices, please, or put them on vibrate. Uh, the next item on the agenda is to receive the uh, minute or I, I guess it was going to be May the 2nd. So moved. May the 16th. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we've got a correction. The meeting today is June 6th. The meeting minutes are May the 16th to approve. I would uh, move to approve. Okay, I'm sorry. Second. All those in favor? We're missing a lot. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, the next item uh, is uh, any continuing continuances? We have none today. Go ahead. Item number one, case number 13721, request of Liberty Point Apartments for a variance to the sidewalk requirement located at 6600 Southeast 74th Street. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dennis Fox and uh, Eric Gummerson is handing out uh, an aerial that will show you the project in question and also some pictures of the area. This is a piece of property that uh, uh, Mr. Allen, you saw come before you probably two years ago. It was zoned industrial, and there was some question about whether apartments were appropriate. Uh, we felt they were appropriate, and, and the, both the Planning Commission and Council agreed. The exhibit that you're looking at is an exhibit which shows the apartments, and they should be finished within um, the next few months. But as you can tell, the, we have an intricate sidewalk system inside of the uh, apartments. We have already constructed the sidewalk on 74th Street. And then the pictures that go along with this aerial show you the, the uh, sidewalk that the city's put in on the other side at Air Depot that runs south under the highway and actually hooks up to the trail system. The first thing that uh, Eric and David Box did was to go sit down and meet with uh, Wendell Wisenhunt and his staff, and uh, they got a confirmation that uh, the Parks Department had uh, no objection to um, us not having a sidewalk. In fact, the, what this does is we will have, we have, as indicated, a sidewalk here, which will funnel anybody that walk, wants to walk on the trail system over to the existing sidewalk and then down to the trail system. So we, we've got some issues in regard to grade. We've got some issues in regard to uh, this, this existing uh, sidewalk that runs into a little AT&T facility. They have easement rights and have the right to stay there. So from our standpoint, uh, it, it's not that we don't believe in sidewalks. We have plenty of sidewalks both uh, on the interior and on 74th Street. We just want to funnel everybody over to the sidewalk that exists on uh, Air Depot that uh, the city put in. As indicated, the Parks Department had no objection to it, and uh, we think that this is a, a unique situation, and that's why we're asking for it. When you look at the property to the south, you run into the I-240 uh, frontage road and then the interstate. So uh, the city's already solved the problem on the east side of the street, and we'd like to take our uh, any residential traffic uh, right by the lake over to that sidewalk. Uh, we're here to answer any questions if you have any. So do you, you're going to do the sidewalks along 74th? They're in, yes, sir. Okay. And then you're going to funnel that sidewalk over to the proposed Draper walkway? Yes. And the proposed Draper, Draper walkway is not in? It is in. And if, uh, if you look at those pictures, the, uh, um, the actual trail system 
is down here, but this sidewalk um, in the pictures that you have, it is existing. Well, I missed it because I just came by there. Uh, um, yeah. I know the one, I know the one, the, the uh, blacktop one exists, but I, I sure didn't see that one on the east side of uh, Air Depot. Okay. And it goes all the way to the to the trail system to the uh, blacktop walkway and the trails. Yes, sir. Mm. And the the picture that uh, Mr. Chambliss has, I think it's about the third one. We'll we'll show you. So the only parts of the property you're not going to have sidewalk would be the the frontage along I-240, and then what would be on the uh, back side of the property would be um, what we're asking the variance for is that that area um, right there that's uh, being shown to you okay we we and and the city's already putting in a sidewalk on the east side of the street so we're gonna we're gonna hook up right there and then people will walk directly south and it hooks right into the trail system and as you can tell by the aerial maps you have, we, we've got an intricate system of sidewalks throughout the uh, property and then already have our sidewalk on 74th. So it, it's not that we're trying to get out of sidewalks. It's that the city's already provided it on the east side of the street, connects the trail system, and so we, we believe that uh, we're in good shape. On the west side of Air Depot, this, the squiggly line, is, it says AT&T driving building. Is yeah, there, the, is that a paved? It is. It's a little paved um, sidewalk that goes to an AT&T building, and they have an easement for it, so that will stay there. So, you know, there's a portion of a sidewalk that already exists, but um, it, you know, they have the easement rights yes. to keep it there. And, so. We've talked a lot amongst ourselves about the sidewalk dilemma, and but it's usually where it's in front of a neighborhood or something like or within a neighborhood or an industrial area where we've waived it and then we've talked about that might not be such a good idea. Is this, and, and I'm asking this question, is this distinguishable in you guys' mind because of the intricate sidewalks within the facility? It, it, it's, it, it, it's a positive, certainly, you know, that the residents are going to have plenty of walk, but you're assuming that the apartment complex will be there, you know, in years to come. And one of the things that we've talked about in regards to this matter is that none of us knows what 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years holds. And that's part of the reason I think, you know, that the, the staff comments about public works objects to this variance request. And the city is making reference to their concerns that if this body grants you a variance, again, not knowing what the future holds, we've created such a patchwork of sidewalk systems that we've really, you know, taken away the reason for doing it in the first place. And so if you've been watching this board's actions in regards to sidewalk variances, we have not uh, granted one outright in, in a while now, but, you know, have, have, have taken other measures. If it's outright commercial or outright industrial where there's just no opportunity for, for residences to be in that proximity, is to give them a time limit and for them to have to revisit but, but we have not granted a forever variance to that location. And, I, you know, and I'm sympathetic with you know, the trails that are already there, very sympathetic with what you've done inside the complex. You've provided many, many options for residents to have safe areas to walk and, and to congregate. What our concern, again, is not the circumstance that we find ourselves in today, but creating a patchwork of sidewalks that can't be undone in the future. I, I think I've got a solution to that. Um, why don't we condition um, any variance upon uh, the existing facility remaining? If the land use changes, then they would have to come in and put in sidewalks. I mean, our dilemma is, I mean, we, we've obviously, when you look at this area, you can see the amount of sidewalks on the internal side. We put sidewalks on 74th. There's already in essence, a sidewalk that goes to AT&T building, we've got about a 30 
to 45% grade, so it creates some real problems as you get closer to the street um, on the south portion of the project. And so the only real piece where somebody wouldn't have a sidewalk is next to the lake. And our view was it was just better to connect them up at the corner and let them go across the street. But we'd have no problem with that condition. And I would defer to staff and council about whether that can reasonably be done because if the apartment complex changes hands, you know, how does that affect? I think what Dennis is suggesting is not that it be uh, conditioned to this particular applicant, but that the property that for this use, as long as it's a multifamily use, then the, the, whatever the board decides, that's what it would be. But if they came in and rezoned it and, or changed it to another use, then uh, they'd have to put in the sidewalk. From my perspective, I think that proposing it that way is a little bit more judicially efficient because we don't have them coming back here every three years and they're still an apartment complex. It doesn't put a substantial burden on the, the owner. I understand. And as long as staff, I mean, uh, the, you know, the city has some concerns and some objections about creating these variances and the impact of that. So I would ask JJ if, if, if that resolution would be acceptable to the city. I mean, yeah, the planning, I mean, the Board of Adjustments approved many variances that are limited to a specific use, and we keep track of that. If they come in for a building permit, change that use, then it's a fresh application. So that it, it, well, uh, it acknowledges the, the network of, of walkways and trails that are there now and doesn't require you to do this, but at the same time, it's not a forever variance that leaves us without any recourse in that area. I'm comfortable with uh, proposing as long as it's used for multifamily purposes that we would allow a variance from the sidewalk re requirement. The only thing is, and I, I think this is what we have to consider, is that even though we've got a lot of sidewalks within that, that's more, that's more of a private use. That we don't have any recourse on the maintenance, yeah. is that what you're saying? I, 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 no. I do have some, yeah, I, 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 I could see that reservation, but I guess the check on it, which is not a government check, is they'll want to keep the aesthetics the way they are to keep tenants. That makes it a little different in my mind. Well, and I'm not a sidewalk advocate anyway because I make a trip, a 250 to 300 mile trip every week around the city of Oklahoma City, around Oklahoma County, I should say. And I see every day that I make that trip, people walking in the street when there's a four foot sidewalk up there for them to walk on. Um, so, but, I mean, we've got an ordinance to contend with. So, you know, either we follow the ordinance or we change it, one or the other, I think. And I, I you know, I, I, in this particular case, I, you know, we've got, we're going to have the sidewalk along 74. And if they would make that continuation where on the uh, AT&T, you've got a sidewalk on Air Depot, I can't see putting a sidewalk on the frontage road that's fenced. It, it, you know, it's fenced. It can't be, really can't be it's used. Waste. So, yeah. you know, I, I would, um, you know, I would be willing to, to go with that if that's, you know, what everybody else would like to do. So, yeah, well, the sidewalk's not required on the, on the frontage road. It's just it's on the two, road. just on the two arterial streets. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 We didn't have any protesters. Do we have any protesters to this item? Apparently not. I know of none. And, and like I said, we, we met with the Parks Department and, and got their approval. So. Well, I'll go ahead and move approval conditioned on the use. I accept that. Yes, sir. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Thank you all very much. You never know. <laughs> I'm glad we had this time together. <laughs> Item number two, case number 13737, request of Raising Cane's Restaurant for a variance to the building setback requirement of the Urban Design District located at 2036 Northwest 23rd Street. Would you state your name and address, please? Yes, sir. Andy McCall. 6767 Perkins Road, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Good afternoon. I'm with uh, 
CSRS. We represent Raising Canes on their uh, their uh, development projects. Um, I guess uh, just a little background. Before we made a, um, a formal presentation to the Urban Design Commission, we made an informal presentation to them. And the purpose of that was to get their feedback and uh, opinion on the project. We knew that we couldn't go forward complying completely with the requirement of the 10-foot build to line, but we wanted to, um, we, the project was really important to Kane, so we wanted it to, uh, wanted to go forward with some sort of compromise that they were okay with. So they gave us feedback at that informal presentation. And then we worked very closely with the planning department to, um, to tweak the plan. We made probably uh, six or seven revisions till we got to something that the planning staff could support for the uh, Urban Design Commission. And then at our uh, formal presentation to the Urban Design Commission, as you guys see in your packet, they, they approved it. And I think uh, that was based um, very much on the fact that we'd worked closely with them and come up with a compromise that, uh, that worked well for them. We're, uh, we're not meeting the, uh, the full letter of the, uh, of the 10 foot build to line law, but it's a compromise. And in their eyes, uh, redeveloping or developing this property was very important because of uh, the condition that it's been in for some time. Um, Keynes is, uh, has, um, it's very important to Keynes to build, ni build and maintain nice facilities. I don't know if you have in your packet a, uh, an elevation, but it's a unique building as far as uh, qual um, quick service restaurants go brick and stucco with um, significant articulation. Um, the landscape is complete. And, um, we actually uh, have a little, applied for a little bit of a parking reduction. We make up for that with the additional landscape points. So it's going to be a very nice project and um, just ask for your support. Happy to answer any questions. Any question? Any comments or protests? From the public regarding this. Anytime you build a facility like this, and this corner has been sitting empty for years and years, it's, you know, you've got additional lighting and additional traffic and additional noise. And Is this the same aesthetics that is your location at Penn and Memorials? We don't have an elevation, we just have a uh, plan uh, with the, I mean, it's going to be the same stucco. Yeah, there's uh, three standards that they use, so it may not be the exact same building, but they all have the uh, similar characteristics, similar finishes. I would make a motion to approve the application. A motion to approve, and there is a second. I'll second. Okay. A motion and a second. All those in favor? You're approved, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. The next item. Item number three, case number 13738, request of RI property for a variance to allow parking and maneuvering in the public right of way located at 2416 North Ann Arbor Avenue. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'm Larry Castle, Jr., uh, 3711 North Classen Boulevard, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73118. I am legal counsel to RI Property, LLC, the applicant in this matter. Um, as you've probably seen from our materials, this, I'm seeking a variance for 12 parking spaces, a green, belt, a, a green belt, and some brick signage that has been in place since 1967. It is on Ann Arbor Avenue. Um, on the east side of Ann Arbor Avenue, and it encroaches on the city's right-of-way for Ann Arbor, I believe 18 feet. Um, again, it has been there since 1967. My client's facility is a nursing home facility, uses those parking spaces for visitors, employees, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as you probably noted from uh, the photographs and other information provided in our packet, for some reason, Ann Arbor Avenue from 23rd Street, and I think it goes clear to 36th, um, despite the fact that it's, 100, it's platted at 100 feet wide, everything on the east and west side of it encroaches in there such that it's leaving only one lane going to the north and one lane going to the south. Uh, we are not seeking to do anything different with our property. We just want to continue like we are, but we, are, we, we need to get a variance so that we can do that in a probably, I would guess, a legal nonconforming way. Um, I have brought Mr. Wilsey, who has run the facility since 2001, with me if you have any questions. It, but it, again, it's been in place for more than 40 years, and we're just basically seeking to preserve the status quo. Any question? I move approval. 
Do we have anybody in the audience wishing to protest? Okay, we have a second. Motion and a second to approve. All those in favor? You approve, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item number four, case number 13739, request of superior neon signs for a variance to allow a sign located in the public right of way, located at 10 North Broadway Avenue. My name is Jim Gleason. I'm with Superior Neon Signs, 2515 North Oklahoma, here in Oklahoma City. Uh, presently, there's, there's currently a sign in this exact same location. It's been uh, located there probably, I think, a little over 10 years. What we're asking for is we're asking to replace this sign. Um, the small monument sign, what its main use is for is, number one, pedestrian traffic and also uh, vehicular traffic. With a downtown building, some of the high-rise signs that we put up on the buildings can't be seen by the vehicles. And these signs, we like to place these signs in an area where people know where to turn into the parking lot or turn into the valet safely. Um, currently, there's really no good location to place this sign. Anywhere we place, it's going to be back either behind the building or behind a post. So we're asking that we can uh, keep it placed out in the right of way. But you're, you're, you're going to replace it. The same size, same configuration. It looks to me like it's the same width, a little bit different configuration, but it's not any larger than what it is. It says colors, letter height, and size will remain the same. Correct. Is this a corporate rebranding, or did the owner of this property? Well, it, it started with the upper elevation letters were getting old, and they started blowing off the building, some of the faces. So they wanted to get that change. That was the main. Uh, the main reason for the change. And with that, yeah, it's kind of a corporate rebranding. I don't think they would be doing this unless uh, we had some deterioration for the upper elevation, so they decided to change all of them. Any other questions? Anybody in the audience wishing to protest? Entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? You approve, sir. Thank you. Item number five, case number 13740, request of Glenn and Christy Holcomb for a variance to permit a detached accessory building encroaching the 25-foot side yard setback located at 10821 Wrestler Lane. Good afternoon. I'm Glenn Holcomb, and uh, I live at 10821 Wrestler Lane. That's out by Northwest Expressway in the Turnpike, right off of Hefner Road. And I'm the first house uh, on the southwest corner of Hefner Road and Rustler Lane. Uh, what I'm requesting to do is to build a small hobby building, 30 by 40 building, uh, which is not a problem on a one acre lot. I, everyone there has one acre. Uh, the person behind me has about nine acres, so it's pretty open. Uh, my request is just that I would like the building to be closer to my south property fence line. Uh, we currently have a 25-foot uh, setback for city ordinance, and I would like it to be uh, 10 foot from that. And so that is why I applied for this. I and, currently and have the, a, and the I'm reason, sorry. The reason for that. The reason for that is because um, I have a driveway on the uh, south side of the house. If you can see on the view from Rustler Lane as you come in, uh, my garage, you have to make a right turn to go into it, so the driveway goes on back to the west. Um, I would like to build that building right there directly in line with my driveway. I have a above ground pool back in the backyard that was there um, and will continue to be there. Um, it was there when I purchased the house five years ago. Um, it doesn't show it on this photo, but there's also a gas meter in my backyard at the very back that's uh, down close to the southwest corner, and it runs at an angle to the northeast, and it runs between the swimming pool and there's actually will be about a 10-foot space there uh, between the pool and the building, and then that gas line runs right between there, and so I would not have to uh, do anything with the gas line. Um, also, I have my septic lines, which run on the other side of the house, and as you can see, it's the aerobic septic, and it takes up all of that north part of the yard where you couldn't uh, 
you wouldn't want to put a building there anyway because I don't want it close to Hefner Road on the Hefner side. I want to keep it to the south side of the property where it's not as visible to anyone uh, as I can. So just in the layout of the property, the way the 30 by 40, and uh, I would have it at least 15 to 20 feet back from the house. Uh, and, uh, and I just need it closer so that I can go straight in and straight out of the building instead of having the building more behind the home as I back my boat in and things like that. What's the building going to be built? Is it it's, uh, metal it's, or? Yes, it's professionally built by Callahan Steel Buildings. Um, I'm not doing it myself. Uh, it's a, uh, it'll be a really nice looking metal building uh, with a 412 pitch on the roofing and uh, I'm doing kind of a uh, kind of an antique type design to it uh, to make it so that it appears to look just like our house. It'll be the same colors. I'm also going to have some posts on it that, uh, that make it appear that it looks like the home, not a barn style, you know. Are you going to finish the walls on the inside? I am not going to necessarily finish the walls. Uh, I will probably just do more like tools and things like that up on the walls okay, on the, the inside. The reason for the separation, the main reason, and correct me if I'm wrong, JJ, <clears throat> is for fire. And I think that's the main reason for that separation, isn't it, JJ? Uh, fire and just to give some light and air and some separation between the properties on these larger lots. Would you consider making that uh, south wall, the one that's closest to the property line, making that a uh, one hour wall, which would mean to sheet that wall with fire rated sheetrock? I would imagine that I could do that. Okay. Any questions? I, I had a question about this document that your neighbor signed. Uh -huh. The information in this contradicts a little bit the application. It says the building to be located within eight feet of the south property line, and then the building will be 30 by 40, which is within guidelines. Then the variance will be a covered porch on the north side of the building, which will make the overall eight by 40. Is, is that accurate or, or, or not accurate? Do you know? The, uh, I was originally I, I, 8 or 10 feet. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, we're at 25 feet now. If, you know, if I could just move it over some, I would be happy with that. Uh, 10 feet is good. 8 feet is good. Uh, you know, I just want to get closer to my south fence so that my building size will actually be 30 by 40. The building is 30 by 40. And yes. you're talking about a one-hour rated firewall on the, on the south exposure of the building. What's the little eight by eight? That's a little storage building I have there now that oh, okay. will, it'll just be gone. Just building a safe room there, I think. <laughs> no, that's a building they had already on that okay. uh, sheet there, just for my what any I store now. Any other questions? Do we have anybody in the audience wishing to protest? Chair, entertain a motion. I would uh, make a motion to approve condition that the the south exposure of the building carry a one-hour fire rating. Is that acceptable? I don't know how much that cost. <laughs> it's not, well, I, you know, I mean, yeah, it's going to be more than just regular sheetrock, but, <laughs> right. it, you know, the, it, uh, it not significantly right. more, I don't think so. Well, I, I wasn't planning on sheetrocking it inside to make it like a, a, any type of living quarters or anything. That would be the only way I would vote for it. Okay. But I don't think that's a requirement to sheetrock the full interior, is it? It's, it's simply a matter of sheetrocking and, and yeah. to that one hour fire rating on that south exposure on, only. On the south wall? Right. South wall. Only 40 feet along. That runs right. east and west on the south side of the building. To the top of it. Right. I can agree to that. Okay. And I'll second it. Got a motion to, uh, and a second with conditions. All those in favor? You approve, sir. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Item number six, case number 13741, request of Megatel Homes for a variance to allow a 32-square-foot construction sign located at 15924 Cantera Creek Drive.
name is Ron Alexander, and I live at 2525 Scarlet Oak Court in Choctaw. And I represent Megatel Homes. And we appreciate your giving us an opportunity to request a variance, but we'd like to put up a 4 by 8 sign. Uh, it will be removed from the street, be up next to the house where we have our flag. And we feel like it would enhance our ability to market our model better, call a little more attention to it. And, of course, marketing, that's pretty important, is to be able to have people recognize that this is our model home we'd like for them to visit. Uh, we have 25 lots in that Northampton edition. And as soon as those lots are completed with construction, then we'll take this down. Everybody that's in business, you know, desires to <laughs> have the visibility uh, that you seek for your development. And, and without the restriction of an ordinance, I mean, you'd have no telling what, because, I mean, it would just be an opportunity to outdo each other to create visibility for whatever you were selling or promoting. Uh, your request is, is, I understand what you want, but is there anything, first of all, we don't have anything that shows what that sign would look like and see anything, you know, the proximity to the site that, that makes visibility an issue? Or uh, There's nothing that would obstruct the vision. Uh, this would set up off the street near the house. It's within two feet of the home. Uh, it's a nice brick pedestal, so it reinforces its But you understand the point. Without, without some restriction as to what you can do, it just becomes a, you know, I mean, everybody, uh, you know, just builds larger and larger and larger, uh, you know, signs or, or things that attract people to their edition or their, whatever they're selling. Well, this is, uh, I, I, I echo Jeff's comments, and this kind of is, we've dealt with this issue before down in South Oklahoma City right off the highway where nobody really adhered to the, 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 the statutory requirements, and then we just had bigger and bigger and bigger signs. So I have two things that I'm concerned about. The size is substantial over the limit, and the second thing is, we need to make this some kind of time where it's while they're under construction, three years, five years, something like that. To yeah, I'm, I, I'm not even going to be able to go there. I'm going to have to object respectfully to your request because there's, there's nothing that differentiates what you're doing with what, you know, anybody else that's selling an addition is doing. Well, if I might interject, we, uh, Megatel, when they originally started, hired a construction superintendent, and he worked within the parameters of what we were told we could do. And... We did a very nice masonry base and put up the four by eight sign because the people we bought the land from said this was acceptable. And then I found out if we were the original developer, that would have been allowed. But we weren't the original developer. We just bought their last 25 lots. And we did our model. It's a very attractive model, and this is back away from it. And then we discovered we were not in compliance. We took the thing down, and then we requested the variance. And... Uh, we would really appreciate an opportunity. It would be removed as soon as we finished the construction up there. This is not a permanent thing, obviously. We're going to sell that house. And uh, it sits back off the street. It doesn't obstruct anyone's view. Uh, it's very aesthetic pleasing, we think. And so we'd appreciate And I understand that. And, and again, it's, it's not really the, the point. But I, I, I do understand that. But I, I just... Uh, would have trouble supporting your application for those reasons. Well, we would appreciate your reconsidering it because we'd like to have it up. Would you be more comfortable, Jeff, if they came back and showed us some type of rendering of what they want to do and how long they want to have it and what it's going to look like? We'll be happy to do that. Uh, it would be nice, but I, you know, I don't know even that, you know, whether that's enough. I mean, what's the justification? And what, you know, what stops every other builder that's trying to sell out of a development coming back and saying, well, is a justification that the first developer would have gotten it, so they're just in the ordinary course of business. I mean, I'm just, I'm not saying I'm just asking that question. Here, here's an issue that, a larger issue that comes up with us is people come to us and they said, w w I didn't know. And it, it, it's hard to be sympathetic to that, you know. Part of my responsibility as a driver is to know, you know, where I am and what the speed limits are where I am. When a, a transaction occurs, to me, part of your responsibility is to know what you're buying and if there are any restrictions and, and so forth and so on, to be aware of those. To me, you know, it may be unfortunate that you don't know that, but it, it's your responsibility to know those things. I will have to agree with you. I came along after the fact, and so I ended up here today. But 
I, I understand your objection to it because I, you wouldn't want just huge signs thrown up arbitrarily everywhere. It begins to set a precedent for others that are watching and, and they're, you know, competing with you for the attention of the public to sell their development. And I don't doubt that it's a beautiful addition and it's a beautiful sign. But it, it creates a scenario where it's, you know, if, if you're allowed to do it, it makes it much harder for this body and encourages them to come and ask for the variance requests. In the same way on these sidewalk variance requests that we hear, everybody wants to be relieved from that obligation. But at some point, you know, you, you begin to lose the integrity of, of, the, of the ordinance and then of the intent. And so my intent is not to deny you every opportunity to sell your addition effectively or to punish you in any way, but, but I'm not going to be able to support your application. Any other comments? Anybody in the audience? Do we have a motion? Make a motion to deny the application. Do have a second? Well, I'll second it so we can vote. All those in favor of the motion? Who's not voting? Jeff, did you vote? There you go. Okay. You're denied, sir. Thank you. Item number seven, case number 13743, request of Corsair Coffin for a variance to the required number of parking spaces and to allow parking and maneuvering in the public right of way located at 1200 North Pennsylvania Avenue. I'm Randy Hill with E.D. Hill, surveying and engineering, representing the applicants. Uh, who are here in the chamber today as well. We have been answering any of your questions. Uh, we think that what we're doing here is uh, really helps the neighborhood. It's it, we've improved the appearance and the utilization of an existing center that uh, was uh, has been there for a number of years, and uh, we'd ask for your approval. This area has been improved substantially. I, it makes me wonder, would it have been wise to, to have this variance you know, settled, this variance request settled before they invested in the remodeling? Because if we deny you, I mean, it, it's going to hamstring what you can do. Am I correct? That's correct. It just seems that, that it would have been prudent to have known where you stood on this. The other thing I think about in scenarios like this is if people need more parking space, they're headed back into the neighborhood and, you know, they're going to street park. Well, obviously, uh, in, the, in the past, this hadn't been a problem for this center, even when it was a movie theater. And, uh, but, but times have changed. In, 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 in the time frame that you're talking about, there were many fewer cars. Most families had one automobile and not two or three like they do now. So I, I, I appreciate that observation, but I still think is there's validity to the fact that if there is overflow, and I know you have some tenants already in place there. Yeah. Are yes. there more people signed but not moved in? Can you tell us anything about the nature of the businesses that are going to be there? Uh, well, we've got, uh, right now we've got one restaurant, a tattoo parlor, and, uh, and, uh, and one other business there. I believe it's a haircut salon. Uh, they've had some uh, inquiries from uh, uh, some, telephone, some telephone people and like for a Verizon store and that sort of thing. And I think there's a tattoo place already in there. Yeah. The notification would have gone to what? Is it, is it 300 feet residence within 300 feet of this location? Yes, sir. Is there anybody from the public or any feedback or any objections from the neighbors that you're aware of? I'm sure they're happy to see the area, you know, improved. And again, if they're not concerned, then, you know, it may be mine alone. But I, I think if, if the parking lot is full, that's what you're going to see. It's probably more likely to happen if it becomes an entertainment destination, if there's are restaurants or, or things like that. But that's, I, I'm not going to object to your application. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see this area be redeveloped and to see resources poured in there and for that area to be improved. It is an improvement. Thank you. Any other comments? Anybody in the audience wishes to speak? If not, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. 
Second. And a motion and a second. All those in favor? You're approved, sir. Thank you very much. Item number eight, case number 13727, appeal of Rudy Heimer of the decision of the Historic Preservation Commission regarding the denial of a certificate of appropriateness for the installation of vinyl siding, vinyl windows, and steel French doors located at 2504 North Hudson Avenue. Good afternoon. I'm Rudy Heimer. I reside at 627 Clausen in Norman, Oklahoma. I represent the owner of this property. Uh, we took over management for the owner back in 2006. They purchased it in 2004. When we took the property over, it was in very poor condition. Many of the single pane aluminum windows were broken out. The operating mechanisms on them were broke. There was rotted siding. Uh, it was a, the roof was in poor condition. So we went in at the owner's request and uh, put in uh, brand new windows, uh, new French type doors, and um, vinyl siding. That was back in 2007 and 2008 that we did that. And then earlier this year, we get a notice from the city stating that um, we did not get a certificate of appropriateness, which um, we did not realize was, was needed. Um, we did go ahead and do the application with the um, Historical Commission um, since the and as a result, they declined that here, and that's um, why I'm here at the Board of Adjustment here asking for your consideration on this. I think there's some things that are kind of unique on this. It's that, you know, for one thing, as one of the commission members brought up, this was done four or five years ago. If this was such a problem, they said, why didn't someone say something four or five years ago? So there's certainly a lapse in time that I think is something that could be considered as a mitigating circumstance on this. Um, also, there's over 30 houses in this neighborhood that are vinyl siding and or windows or some type of vinyl trim. I'm sorry, my packet that I've sent in is an actual very large packet, and I'm sorry about that, but I just wanted to show you how many properties for the website, and I drove the neighborhood and provided pictures of all these different properties. So it does blend into the um, neighborhood. Most of the historic properties in this neighborhood were built in the early 1900s. This property was built in the early 1970s. What's in there now with the stuff we put in is consistent with what uh, was used during that period. The staff commission, and this is a quote, says this property is unique in that it was not constructed during the period of significance or during a period in which the special zoning regulations applied. Um, this property is a non-contributing, non-historic property. So what I'm asking is that you all will consider granting a variance on this with the stipulation, if you would so desire, that once it has to be done again, if we have a hailstorm or something like that that damages the siding, then we'll go through the process with the historical commission. And I'll end with just, um, we have several support letters that were sent in one by the owner directly to the south that I think is pretty much sums it up a lot. He goes, he's owned his property since 1995 and has intimate knowledge of the degraded condition of the property and criminality of the tenant population. In the past four years, the property has improved dramatically, both in appearance and tenant quality. The improvements all have attached uh, a better class of tenant and improved the historic neighborhood for all. It says the property was built in the early 70s with no historic features. No matter what you do to it, it's not going to look historic. I mean, you can't make a square, you know, building that was built in the 1970s uh, resemble something that was built in the 1920s. So this person, that uh, Ronald Cooper, that sent this letter in, you know, would also hope that you all would grant an adjustment on this as long and as well as several other people that sent in uh, letters of support. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, Danny, I've got a question. The way that the case was briefed, and I appreciate the defendant, or the defendant, the applicant being pro se, we're reviewing this under a de novo standard. It's not a variance. It's a reversal yes. of the decision, which 
and then we vote to grant the certificate of appropriateness, correct? You, re you would reverse the decision of the HP Commission denying the certificate. I just want to be sure that my fellow board members were aware we're under a different standard than we normally do. Is the letter of support that you just referenced, is that the new evidence that you have from, from the April 3rd hearing? Uh, yes, these letters are included and in, should be in your packet, but they were not available at the commission. Is there anything else new since the April 3rd meeting? I, I received one other letter after the cutoff date, but it, it's pretty much just uh, one of the letters that says we support it. So it's just that's the only new that we have that's not in your packet. But all these support letters were not available at the time of the commission uh, hearing. I think one of the, the things that, you know, as a board member that I think about is, Jefferson Park, the designation occurred in 1998, correct? Uh, I'm not sure uh, if you might it, it did, it did. And your owner that you represent purchased the property in 2004, I believe. Mm -hmm. and, and again, as I stated in the last case, it makes me wonder, and you, and you referenced in your April 3rd testimony, that you were unaware, like you did just That's a moment correct. ago. And it makes me wonder why, you know, what, where did things fall through the cracks? You know, who didn't read their paperwork? Who wasn't paying attention? But these things are important. And anybody that lives in a, a historical preservation district agrees, you know, by virtue of the fact that you, that you purchased there, to, you know, a different standard applies. And there's, there's a reason for that. But if you want the freedom, you know, to do almost anything you want to your home, uh, areas that, that carry that designation are, are not for you. Um, and in, so in the same way that, you know, the reference to the driving and knowing what the speed limit is and knowing what the rules of the road and so forth and so on would apply to cases like this. Not knowing, although regrettable, is not an excuse for not complying. The other homes that have vinyl siding, there is, as they, as they referenced in the April 3rd meeting, there is no way to know whether those homes, you know, had that siding on before the 1998 designation was in place or, or whether they're just out of compliance. There's no way to know. We don't know why your property came under enforcement action. Somebody may have seen it and not been sure and called it in. As citizens, any of us have the right to do that. If, we're, if, we, if we think somebody's not in compliance, we have the ability to call the city and say, would you check it out? And they will. Um, the other thing, too, is as an owner representative, and, and this, I think, is important. Part of the reason that your property is doing well, and I'm sure that it has increased in value. I hope that your tenants are good and stable and profitable tenants for your owner. Part of the reason you enjoy that is because of the protections that are in place when you have historic preservation guidelines. So it's, you know, it's the good news and it's the bad news. You know, there's a higher level of, of con conformance and compliance, but at the same time, it protects you as a property owner and as an investor there to assure that, that your property and that neighborhood remain stable and grow. We, we're seeing more and more activity in that neighborhood, and that, that neighborhood has been on its back for years. And I can't help but believe that these designations help stabilize and allow people. The man that owns this building will not come in and buy that and upgrade that building unless he has reasonable assurance that his investment is protected and that that, 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 that area is going to get better and not worse. And so I, I think as a, as a building owner, even though I'm not going to be able to support your request today, that as a building owner, and you may take a hickey to go back and, and be in conformance if, this, if you don't prevail here, that overall you're the beneficiary because you bought in that area early and you're enjoying the wave of, of resurgence and stability that I think that we're seeing in that part of the city. Same thing happened in Heritage Hills and Mesta Park and others, and people come in and they want to do this and do that. If they thought that every time they try to erode the preservation guideline, you're actually hurting yourselves because you create scenarios where other people can do things that might negatively impact you. I might not be offended by vinyl siding. 
I might look at it and go, yeah, it's not historically significant because it doesn't look pretty like a historical home. But nevertheless, it's in an area that carries that designation. And to me, that's what's important. And so I, I, I'm totally sympathetic with you know, your predicament and what you're asking for. But I think it's like when I was disciplined as a child and they told me you know, that it was good for me. They hated to do it, but it was good for me. I kind of feel the same way. I know this is, you know, if you're denied here, it's going to cost you some money, and it's, and it's not what you're asking for. But I'm going to tell you, in, in the, the larger scheme of things, and over time, I believe that, that you and your, and your owner will benefit from this area that's coming up. Yeah, I appreciate your comments. I know that I agree with you that we benefit in the area. I don't think there's any benefit from anyone on throwing all the siding into the dump and starting over. I mean, this was done five years ago. On your previous um, case, I mean, the person already did the improvements and now coming back, you made the comment that, you know, he's done all the work, done all that. If we deny him now, it's just curtailing, you know, what they've done. Same, I believe, applies here. I mean, it's been done five years ago. Um, I think that's distinguishable in my mind because when we've granted and reversed the decision of the Historic Preservation Commission based on my tenure on the board, there's been some overriding safety issue, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be a, a, a door that was a safety door with iron or it be in the interest of a tenant at a duplex where an additional drive was, was added so the tenant didn't have to park in the alleyway where there had been some crime involved. And that's kind of been, since that's been our kind of standard for review. And I, I sympathize, I echo Jeff's comments. I'm, I'm very empathetic and sympathetic as a business person that you have to go back and do this. But also, this is the only protection people in these neighborhoods have. They don't have the standard covenants, restrictions that, that, that we would in more modern neighborhoods. So, I mean, that's, that, that's just my comment on it. Yeah, I mean, I would think that, you know, there would be more protests. There's no protest, to my knowledge, on this property. If we go back and change it to T111 siding and single pane aluminum windows, does that really make it look better? Does that make it look more historic? I mean... But, the, but that's not the criteria, because that's what I'm acknowledging. We, as, as board members, we sit here and we go, you know, I, I don't, I'm not offended by it, and I'm not offended by this, and I'm not offended by that. Right. But that's not what we're here for. Part of what we're here for, and the other thing, too, is, is HP has the expertise. That's what they do, is to properly evaluate these, right. these CA requests. And so it's not about what I think personally or whether I think it's a box, and I don't think it's beautiful like a Musta home. Or th those, those aren't the point. And the disposal issue on the vinyl, to me, you know, I, I understand what you're trying to do, doesn't resonate, you know. And I, and, and I would not be in favor of just waiting for the next hailstorm that destroys the siding. I think that it's important, you know, to upheld the historic guidelines and to not second guess. I watched the hearing more than once. And, you know, part of what I look for is were you allowed a full hearing and was everything that you wanted to present and say to that body allowed? Did they properly interpret the historic preservation guidelines and apply them? And in my case, my judgment is you were allowed full access to the commission. You were allowed you know, to say everything that you wanted to say, present all the evidence you wanted to say, and that they properly applied the guidelines. But I'm, you know, I share Nick's, and I'm sure the others, you, nobody's, you know, takes any pleasure in causing you to have to go back and do something. But I, I'm not going to be able to support your request. Yeah, well, thank you for your consideration. Did I hear you say that all these letters were not available at the HP Commission for whatever reason? That is correct. We did not uh, get any letters prior to that meeting. We uh, got them after that meeting. Okay. So these six or seven support letters. Um, we got after that, so that's why they're here and not at that commission meeting. And perhaps it would have made a difference there. But we did not have them at that time. I doubt it would make a difference, but I don't have a problem sending it back, calling that new evidence, giving you a second bite at the apple, but I doubt that will make that much difference. Here's the thing I think of. You know, people send in letters of support and they say, 
It looks fine, and it is fine, and there's no negative impact. But, but we presume that we're the experts and that we're the ones that have knowledge of, of the guidelines and of construction processes and things like that. And that's my problem. They're, you know, they're trying to be supportive and they're trying to be good friends and citizens. But it, it presumes that they have expertise. I, I, I kind of I echo, I agree with you, Jeff, but before we sent him to district court, which could be a very much more expensive process to appeal, should we let the HP take his record into effect, those letters, let them weigh it? I mean, I think that that would be, I agree with everything you said, I just hate to, maybe they see it differently. I mean, we are an appellate, uh, we're here in this case to Novo appellate, so maybe they need to take that into consideration. I don't know what the precedent's been before, as well, I'm, I'm asking. Yeah. Is that appropriate to take it back to the HP and we can remand it back to the HP Commission for receipt of additional evidence. Okay. If my fellow board members feel like, you know, the letters of support constitute enough and important enough new evidence that HP should rehear. And then the process would be if HP upholds their denial, then you have the opportunity to come back here. And then if, if we deny, if we ultimately deny, then you have the recourse of municipal court. Okay, would it be a continuance of this meeting? I just need to answer from my owner. Would we have to file a new application, a new fee, or just it would be? Can, can we actually continue it here and let him take it back? I think the so best thing would be. So there wouldn't be any additional fees? There won't be additional fee. It's the same application. Okay. So, so we, we would just continue it? They would just remand it to the uh, HP Commission for receipt of additional evidence. Okay. So moved. Second. second. Motion and second. All those in favor. Well, I certainly appreciate Understand. your time and your input on this. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank you. Any other items? We're finished, I think, with that. Anything from the board? I guess Tom? the election. We've got election of officers. Oh, that's right. Um, should, should we wait until we have the chairman here or just do it? We can, but I would be more inclined if other members that were potential candidates for chairman were missing. Okay. It's, I'll leave it to your discretion. I'm prepared to, to, to make my preference known for new chairman, but we can, we can wait if you would prefer for a full board. I'm ready to hear your nomination. I would nominate Nick, succeed Mark as chairman, and that Mike would succeed you as vice chairman. Okay, now how are we going to motion? How are we going to do that motion? A second. Can they do a second? Okay. Oh, well, I'll second them. Okay, got a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion? All voted aye. And I guess in absentia, we can extend our thanks to Mark for his, <laughs> for his fine service. Well, if you can't, you know, second your motion for yourself, you know, what can you do? Well, I. I appreciate uh, the sentiment, Jeff, and uh, I uh, told uh, JJ outside that I will hope to be the less colorful chairman and not follow my Uncle Mickey's footsteps. So. <laughs> well, my term, in, my term ends in October, and I, of course, if there's a requirement for a planning commission member to be on the board of adjustment. Um, I've been on. I think this is my one and a half term or something like that. So I will be going off in, in November and you will be getting somebody new. Uh, you know, it's a, every Thursday's tied up when you're both that away and it kind of gets old. <laughs> Even though it is a little fun, you know. But. If there's no other business, I'd make a motion to adjourn. I second.